Hello, Internet. I got this uh, fancy power collar, Red Devil, Radeon, uh, something. I don't know what it is. You guys know what it is? We'll find out in just a second. I came with a note. Saying, hi Tony, I've changed thermal paste and the pads prior to sending this to you. Ah, uh, so he changed the paste and the pads. The card lasts about a minute or two, then crashes to a black screen. When I tried firmware test it, crashed immediately with some artifacting on the fairy donut. Hope this helps to narrow it down. Thank you for your time. All right. Let's see if that helps to narrow it down. Well, at the very least, we know it's working. So we're going to trust this seller. I'm sorry, the owner. We're going to trust the owner. We're going to pop in the memory test <coughs> hard drive. And uh, we're going to try to run a memory test. All right, so I'm going to exit out of this with the Q, and then I will type in the command to get inside. Uh, see, now I have to figure out what this card is. What is this card? This card is 123. 123. So it's the 67XT, according to the customer. 67XT. So change that number there. Whoop. 67. Why the num lock? 67. Do I even have that there? Let me see. Rx. Okay, what do you have? R... 67 XT. We have R67 XT. Okay. Now let's run this uh, thing here. Training check for Memtune. See what it says. No false detected. Okay. Okay, the dialer seems to be okay. Temperatures are rising very, very slowly. The clock are a bit low from my liking. Yeah, they are way low. Possibly because Valley is not a very demanding application. So let's close the Valley and let's Let's hit this thing with a, a hairy donut. See how it likes it. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Maximum frequency on the core right away. We have no crashes. Temperatures are slowly rising, which is good. We didn't see any spikes which means our thermal interface is working properly all right i'm just gonna let it run for a while and then uh, we'll conclude this repair and let the owner know and what we're gonna let the owner know is that uh, we have frozen and the card has crashed okay okay that's uh, wonderful okay so in cases like that what we want to do is we want to check phases and uh, make sure that they are all working correctly so let's go ahead and do that real quick. Put 
the heat sink on. Prop something underneath. Like a screwdriver. That's probably okay. Alright. Let's check the phases. These first two are probably going to be memory. Their signal is a little wider. Nothing in here. Nothing in here. Nothing in here. Oh, apparently it takes a while for these to wake up. Okay. Let's see. All right, so it looks like we do have all the phases. Um, except that for whatever reason, it took them a while to wake up. But it looks like it works fine on a second attempt. Except that it, it kind of does and it kind of doesn't. So, what I want to do now is uh, when we're having an issue like that is I want to I want to connect to this board to its face controller by using this device this is the Infineon USB 005 right there this thing is a little bit, little bit expensive, but we cannot live without it. If you're doing AMD cards, it is absolutely necessary to have one of these in your toolbox. So, this is the chip. This IR three something something three five two one seven they do come in a number of variations like little different numbers off but essentially they're all the same so um that's basically a multi-phase controller it controls all of your phases what we want to do is we want to connect to uh, this chip to i2c pins and uh, and then we're going to be using this, this dongle and a software to monitor device status, see if there are any faults, uh, and maybe we can reflash the firmware uh, just to make sure that everything works. So the easiest way to connect to this device would be to look on the board. There are three pins that we have to connect to. So the first one is the ground. Then we'll have to connect to uh, SDA and SCL. So in these pins, you can connect directly to the chip. You can just solder them on, but it's very finicky and it's a very delicate place. Uh, generally speaking, you don't want to do that. What you want to do <laughs> is you want to connect somewhere on the board. And uh, usually, uh, usually there is some sort of a connector. Uh, there should be three pads that will allow you to connect to the board, to that chip. So you would think three pads that would look kind of like that, except that they would probably be larger. So let me go ahead and look around and uh, hopefully, hopefully I find them right there. See, right there. So, SCL, SDA, and ground. So that's exactly where I'm going to solder my, uh, my dongle. So the red one is SDA, SCL, and ground. So let's connect that as per the instructions on the board. 
and then we'll monitor what it does. So, hold on a sec. Let me uh, let me set this thing up here. Let me set this thing up. Okay, there. Cooler. Where's the cooler? Such a small cooler, easy to miss. All right, so there's our cooler. And so this end, I will plug it into the computer. But not right away. I mean, I can plug it in now, but I'm not going to. So let's plug in the the card itself, make sure that everything is powered as it should be and uh, I'm going to boot this into Windows. This is a program that I am using so I'm waiting for the USB to be connected This thing's supposed to turn green. Okay, the device manager said that the driver was installed. So let me go ahead and restart this program real quick. I'm going to restart it. All right, there we go. All right, my bad. I messed up. I forgot to install the drivers. So we're back to... <clears throat> We're back to our old, uh, to my desktop computer. And as you can see, the driver is now recognized the device and it is connected. So let's go ahead and populate. And um, let's see if, um, let's see if I can, Let's see if I can do both things at once. Interesting. Let's see. One more capture device, capture display capture. Existing, now we're probably gonna do, let's see. Let's say, rename. All right, add, display capture, add existing, there we go. So, let's see, overhead. All right, that's what we wanna see, okay, finally. So we're gonna have our program there. Let's see if we can make this somewhat readable. All right, so we're in here. Let's read the status of the device. Okay, and then we're gonna, and then we're gonna see if we can crash this card one more time with Farmark. I'm gonna open up. GPU Z to monitor the temperatures just in case. All right, so Firmark is running and the utility is watching. Now let's see if we're gonna get anything interesting.
Okay, so we're frozen and it says that we have a phase fault and the phase current is um, L103. Okay, so we are actually getting somewhere with this. So let me turn off that computer right there. All right, so phase number three. Okay, so now we have to figure out what's going to be phase number three. And so let's look at the uh, current configuration. Loop configuration 5 plus 1, so we want to make sure let's read everything. And let's save this configuration file with no password. This is going to be saved as... Uh, What's the what's the brand of this card? I forgot. What is the brand of this thing? Power color, red devil. Okay. Power color. Power color red devil. Red devil. Um what is this? I gotta look it up. I forgot what card I'm working on. That is RX sixty-seven sixty-seven hundred XT five plus one. Very important. Okay, so we're gonna save. Our file has been created containing all sorts of data that are operating this chip. Okay, so we have to now figure out without a board view which phase is going to be phase number three. This is going to be kind of tricky, but I hope you understand the process. Um, this board view is does not match. Uh, what does match is the pattern um, that's most likely the board is going to follow. So typically speaking, all of these phases are up here on the top. And then we have some phases on the left. Um, and by saying typically, it's typically for AMD. We have uh, first two top phases are usually memory. And the way we can distinguish them from the rest is that they are th their pulse signal is longer than the rest. I will show you what I mean in just a second. So if I were to probe a memory phase, see how wide this is. Now let's now let's probe a regular core phase. It's like half half the half the time. So that's how we're able to tell. Now, you, we're going to run into a problem with different types of core um, power rails. We have SOC and the actual GFX. So the way to tell which one is which is you have to have um, two-channel oscilloscope. So let me put probe number one on the channel one um, on the very first core phase and let's uh, power on the card okay so there we go so now I'm going to put a probe right next to it see they look the same but they are not firing at the same time so I'm just gonna keep on going down this one's closer this one is away somewhere, but if I probe the other two, actually, let me go ahead and show you exactly what I'm doing. It's a bit confusing right now. Okay, so one more time. This probe's gonna go in here. So we already figured that these two are memory because their signal is wider than the rest, than, than the rest of these. So we're not going to look into those. Let's go ahead and just mark them they are memory okay now we still need to figure out which one which ones 
of these are SOC. Typically, there are anywhere from two to four SOC, most likely two. Um, typically, I don't know. I'm not an AMD expert, to be honest. I, um, what I've seen is probably two. So, but we still need to figure out which ones are which. So let's uh, put the probe here and then watch for a signal. And then as I watch for a signal, I'm going to probe the one that's right next to it. So if they look identical, they're probably the exact same type of um, rail. This one here, they do shift in time, but they look identical. This one's even closer together, but they look identical. But if I go here, I see noise because these two are completely out of time with the rest. So we can go ahead and check the other ones on the opposite side. So this one, this one, this one, this one, they all look the same except for these two on the right bottom. So we have now just eliminated these two and we know that they are SOC. So we have two memory and then we have two SOC uh, rails. So now we have to figure out which one fires we have to find out which one is um, phase number three, which was reported by the software. The, the third phase, that's the problem. So generally speaking, um, and I think, I think this is probably correct. Uh, the first, the phase number one is always right next to the memory. Almost, uh, I would say, always at the top, right here somewhere on the board so all we have to do is we have to probe each phase in comparison to this one and see which one is going to be closest in relationship to this phase so let's let's go ahead and do that so let's we're gonna find the closest one so this one is halfway there so this one is, it seems like it's like right next to it, right? Okay, so let's continue on. This one is much further apart. And we're going to go here, here. So this one is like right behind it. And this one is right ahead. Okay, so let's mark those. <coughs> This one is ahead, and I believe this one was right behind. Let's go ahead and double check that. We don't want to look like idiots. So yeah. Oh, see? Told you. Which one is right behind? Is it this one? That one? Which one was it? Was it this one? Oh, I'm sorry. See? Always have to make sure that we mark the correct ones. So we have we now have two phases that that can be phase number two. How do I know which one of them is two? Um, you would think, well, it's the one that's following it, and that is exactly right. Okay, so I just double-checked uh, by comparing this non-matching board view. So basically, I, I clicked on PVM signal for this uh, phase controller for uh, driver MOSFET. I'm sorry, and then under here it says PVM one, so that's first first phase, um, and then then we skip one over, and that's PVM two, so that's a second phase. This guy here would have been would have been phase number ten, which is the last phase in order, and that is why what we saw on the screen is like right behind directly behind phase number one. So let me go ahead and turn that on one more time. And basically what I mean by that is every time, so then if the phase two would be right next to it, then the, th the third, then the fourth, then the fifth, and so on until it gets to the end of it. And then you end up having a phase that's right b behind it. Or in this case, it'll be showing um, on this end. So we have now effectively found out the first and and the second and the last phase. Now, where is the third phase? The third phase, uh, we're going to have to follow the exact same 
idea. So we're going to start measuring from the phase that we know that's phase number two. And then we're going to start looking for a phase that's right next to it, according to the signal. So clearly this isn't the one. This one is far away. This one's behind. This one's behind. This one's ahead, maybe too far, too far ahead, right there. So looks like, looks like this is going to be phase number three. So let me put a mark on that phase as soon as I find the marker, because the marker likes to go away. Okay. I think, I think I've just uh, figured which one's three. So we can assume this is one. Uh, whatever, we, we know it's one. One, two, this is three, this is 10. So basically we now know that this guy is complaining about the phase three. So let's take a look at what we have under there. And see what kind of device is operating that phase. So let's switch to microscope real quick. Let's see, where are we? We are right there. SIC 649A. Okay. SIC 649A. Let's see if we have one in stock. 649A. SIC 649A. I do not have 649A in stock. So, what we can do at this point is I will take I will take this driver MOSFET and move it down. Basically, I'll do a switcheroo and then we'll run the card again and then see if the error will switch to a completely different phase which will be a good indication that that there's a problem with the actual driver MOSFET driver MOSFET and if the problem will not follow the MOSFET but stay in the same phase then we have a problem with either firmware that's loaded on this controller or the controller itself so we'll see what we'll, we'll have to uh we'll see what we need, we need to do about that when we get there so for now i'm just gonna go ahead and swap these two driver mosfets because i don't have anything in stock so if the problem does follow then i know i need to order some of those. Alternatively, you can figure out which ones are memory, which ones are SOC, is basically measuring for resistances. Now, in this particular card, there are two types of memory rails. One is this, uh, one is MVDD, MVDD, and the other one is VDDCI. So, this one is 32 ohms. That's like a typical resistance on your memory card. That's uh, MVDD. The VDDCI it's going to be lower resistance than that. And these two, their, their uh, signal profile on the oscilloscope looks almost identical, but their voltage is different. 1.36 volt on this, 0 0.9 volt on this. So if you can go around and measure voltages on each, on each rail, it might be misleading. So the voltage isn't really a reliable way to differentiate the phases because uh, you will also mix them up with the SOC rails because SOC... Let me plug in a different card. I mean, different PCI Express slot. There we go. So we have SOC at 906. We have regular cores at 902. Hardly any difference. And then 904 for this um, VDDCI memory rail. So can't really go with that method. 100%. Now, but however, you can go with the resistances because typically the resistances on SOC rail are 
actually higher than the core. So the core is so low that my multimeter can't even pick it up. But the SOC rails, you can generally differentiate from the rest. That's basically how this method works. Okay, so you thought to yourself, I just watched this video, I got educated. Now I'm going to be super smart and I will have no problem identifying which phase is which number just by following the technique I demonstrated earlier. However, we only have one controller here. And while this controller is able to control, I believe, up to uh, 16, 32 phases, I don't know. It can control many phases. Um, the way this card is set up, is probably in the worst way possible, making us uh, very confused as to what phase is actually what phase. What do I mean by that? And why do I sound so confused? That is because I am. And let me show you why. I'll show you the ugly truth and the reason why I don't like AMD cards. Um, it would probably be okay if you have the board view, but if you don't, good luck. So let's assume, let's assume that this phase here, so the one, two, three, so sock rail, sock rail, phase, that the GFX is number two. Um, as we've seen per our, our um, identification process. So I'm going to put a probe on there. And I'm going to put a probe on phase one. Let's fire them up, see what happens. So it's not phase number two. Okay, let's move one up. So this one looks like it's number two. So what happened now? See what happens when I flip the switch several times. Oh, I didn't even have to do several times. Phases have now swapped. So let's do it again. Oh, swapped again. Let's do it again. Nope, still the same. Let's do it again. Same. Different. 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 Same. So, do you see where I'm going with this? So, even though, but, but the good news is, even though this phase is now showing not two, the third one is always there. You can see on the oscilloscope it occupies the third square. So, the very good news is that the third phase is always the same. So even if even if we end up shifting to this phase as number two, the third one is always this one, which is good news so that we know 100% that this phase is phase number three. And everything else doesn't really matter anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and clear everything out so that I do not get confused any more than I already am. And especially I don't want you to get confused any more than you already are. What I said about phases is true. However, on this particular card, this controller, if I'm not mistaken, has only five PWM signals, which means it it can only operate five phases, but we have ten. We have ten total phases for the GFX, for the core. So how does it do that? It's using the most worst human inventions ever, called doublers. And the doublers are basically things, these little tiny little guys there. So there's one there, there's one there. And I didn't even notice it at first. So there's a doubler here. Two more doublers there. So they don't even double. I don't know if they're doubling every single phase or some. Not sure. So like one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Yes. Yeah. So we got five doublers, which means we only need to have five PVM uh, signals in to control ten phases. So that is why for this particular card, it was kind of hard to figure out which phase is which number, especially when we were trying to get a phase number two that kept jumping from left and right, but at the very least, the third phase stayed the same. 
for the sake of the concept of identifying the phases. I hope uh, this video was, uh, that part was helpful. So let's, let's continue on. All right, so the DR MOSFETs had been swapped. Uh, card has cooled down. Let's see um, if we have any life on this board. Looks like this one's working and this one is working. So all we have to do now is to plug this card into a computer uh, and run some firmark and see if, if we get it to crash as before. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're back in Windows. Our program is still open. So remember we had error on 03. So we're going to go ahead and close that. I will reconnect the device, making sure that I'm connected directly into the motherboard using old USB 2.0 uh, port. Okay, and then we're going to start. Actually, let's go ahead and repopulate this automatically just one more time. Do you want to save? No, I do not want to save. Okay, there we go. Utilities, device status. There's our status. So let's go ahead and fire it up one more time. See what happens. Again, I'll be closely watching the temperatures. Make sure that we do not overheat. Because we kind of have this temporary setup. Okay, looks like we are okay. So far, so good. And you never know with these driver MOSFETs. Sometimes you end up getting them fixed. Maybe there was a bad solder joint or something. Or sometimes they just die completely after you give them a heat treatment. So, um, right now I do not see any crashes. Oh, there we go. And what does our phase report say? Our phase report says that we are failed on the exact same phase which means we must have diagnosed it wrong. Though, nothing had changed. Let's go ahead and flash, reflash this device. So let's see, do we have any time? We have I think we have uh, either two or one flash left. I think we have two flashes left. So this these chips can only be flashed three times. First time it gets flashed at the factory and then you have two more. So let's load the configuration file. Right there, that's the exact same one that we, that we dumped earlier. We can, we have to click this, click that and click program and verify. So, okay, that's done. Gonna have to power off the cord and I will go back into testing it one more time to see if the fault continues. Uh, so the reason why I flashed it is sometimes uh, firmware gets corrupted though I kind of uh, saved the firmware out maybe there's some kind of reading writing error I don't know I'm going to try uh, this first if that doesn't help I will try to uh, flash it uh, I may I might try to flash it with another configuration but then that will be the last time I will be able to flash it and uh, if I do that that's and, and if that firmware is not going to work, then this IC will have to be replaced. 
So we'll see. As you may have already guessed, I just ended up not fiddling with this card anymore because it just drives me crazy. So I ended up just replacing the chip. So let's power it on. And uh, let's power the board and then we need to connect to the chip one more time. And then we need to uh, upload the configuration because right now I don't think that there should be any configuration. Yeah, right now it says 3.1, which isn't correct, so we have to select our configuration file that we've saved earlier. And then, uh, actually, let's go and see how many flashes we have left. So we have two flashes left on this chip. So let's check that, check that and program and verify programming ended okay looks like we have some errors on the device registers i don't know user section programming failed mfr section programming failed device verify user so it looks like we didn't even program anything okay not sure what that means let's reboot the device one more time let's try it again so the card does output the picture which is good it's just that the phases are not operating properly so let's go back to desktop let's reconnect uh, let's close this I'll reopen it one more time hold on a sec all right populate come on all right there we go okay so let's see what do we have now look configuration 3 plus 1 okay fine so let's go ahead and load our configuration then we're gonna flash our file let's check how many MTPs we have left it says 251 it looks like everything should be fine so let's program Still not working. Okay, I don't know why it's not working. So let's change the configuration to 5 plus 1. Right. Then let's save this configuration to test. Then let's flash this configuration file. Check, check, program. See if that works. Failed. Okay, so my guess is we have a faulty chip that we cannot even flash. Which is awesome. Okay. Okay, I was finally able to uh, flash the chip. Started another chip. And um, I want to see what 
well we get but as soon as I boot into Windows I get I get a crash so let's see the annoying Windows 10 useless repair absolutely unnecessary feature just restart piece of trash anyway so we're waiting for um, my thing to boot and I will connect to the device real quick see if we can monitor we're gonna read the registers configuration loop see we have five plus one so let's check under the utilities and see what's going on and so right now what I'm doing is nothing actually I'm not doing anything the reason why I had problem flashing it is because again um, it seems to be important that that you're flashing this uh, card not externally and that you do have a uh, shared ground at the very least you have to have a shared ground with your device that you're flashing it with so let's go ahead I will quickly check and see if I have all the phases I do not have I don't have uh, any of the phases. I'm actually not sure how the card even displays an image. Probably all runs on sock rail alone. Or it's in some kind of a save mode. So, but we're still watching. We're watching the status of this thing. Who knows what's it gonna do? Let's run the valley. Oh, okay, so no, I think we're good. I think the bias looks odd. I don't know. Let's run this. See what happens. I want to see if any of the phases will actually operate. Okay, so phases have actually. Uh, woken up so my guess is this card had some sort of a power consumption thingy though some phases are not active so there are two phases that are not currently active so let's turn this off I want to check the temperatures I want to make sure we're not exceeding any temperatures so far so good no crashes come on I want to see for mark all right so there's for mark let's see if we going to crash the card immediately okay and we have an error on L04 okay let's power this down my sincere apologies it looks like I need to go to Northridge Fix and take some soldering classes because my solder joints were not there were not as good as they are right now. You can see that especially on the cold side here, this would be the coldest side of the chip because it's the furthest away from the bottom of the PCB so I had some of these joints they were not connected and when I say uh, what I mean by a good joint is let me go ahead and clean that up a good joint would be a transition a very good smooth transition from the side like you can kind of see here let me zoom in so you can see it better maybe see you can kind of see how it transitions from the board to the chip 
So if you don't see that, if you see any kind of crack, any kind of shift, then you know you have a bad connection. You cannot assume that you have a pad making a connection underneath. You cannot assume that. You absolutely have to make sure that they are connected exactly like this. And maybe this time we'll finally get a good stable performance. And maybe this card will finally be fixed after all these years of trying to get it to work. Well, it, not years, but it felt like it was a quite a bit of time had passed since I got this card. Uh-oh, my camera just fell on my head. Oh no, we're all gonna die. Oh boy. Piece of Chinese junk. Exactly. I said it. Ah, uh, it don't hold no more. Good, so I'll have to buy myself a new a new lamp. Cause this one don't even work anymore. Okay, whatever. Screw this. Let's just turn on our computer and see what we get. A good healthy beep. We have a picture. We should be loading Windows any moment now. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we have here. Alright, so let's close this. Let's reopen. Actually, let's reconnect to our chip. No, connection not ready. Okay, why is that? Oh, don't even need to. I forgot to solder the connectors. And that's very important because we have to solder those connectors every time we are dealing with any type of soldering, uh, programming, or whatever. I guess what I'm mumbling about is that what I was trying to say is that it is extremely important to disconnect your dongle while you um, doing soldering with this uh, soldering iron it has to be disconnected not from the board but you have to disconnect the uh, the USB dongle so that way you don't accidentally kill your dongle and the chip that you're programming all right so let's read that Let's see if our configuration is still 5 plus 1. Yep, it is. So we know that it's properly flashed. Let's look into uh, utilities device status. All right, we're going to put that there. And I will go ahead and start. I will check the valley. And I will run valley on low resolution. And I will check phases while Valley is running really quickly so that way I know that all phases are working and none of them are sleeping all right let's see okay so the phases that were not working before are now are now awake every single one of them I hope yes so every single phase is now working so let's bump up the resolution where it would crash us earlier try again so if we oh some kind of a flicker just happened hopefully we didn't get any faults I'm not sure what that flicker was maybe hdmi cable
Okay, so looks like we're running okay. Let's go ahead and run for Mark. And if we're not gonna crash, then I think we have a fix. 70, 71, 72, 73, 75. I think we are doing 78. I have to watch the temperature, make sure that we don't go too hot on the hot spot. 81, 82. 83. Okay, that should be enough. That should be enough for me for the day. Seriously. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, assemble the card and do more stress tests to confirm that we have a fix. To summarize, the reason why I don't like to do AMD cards is because of these stupid controllers, uh, smart controllers, that can sometimes throw you off in and point you to the completely wrong direction. As you have seen, it was complaining about phase three in the, at the beginning. Um, then we swapped driver MOSFETs around. The error did not go anywhere. Uh, then you could assume that it was a firmware uh, corruption. You would flash the firmware. Uh, that didn't do anything. We were still crashing on third phase. Um, and eventually it just ended up being the controller itself. Uh, without any signs of it being faulty, it just it just was faulty. And that's why I don't like them. These controllers are expensive. They are kind of difficult to troubleshoot if you don't have enough experience troubleshooting them, as, as I don't, to be honest. I'm not a specialist when it comes to AMD's controllers of, of this type. I absolutely hate them. Um, but it is what it is. So at the very least, we got it working. So I hope you guys like this video and find it educational, maybe entertaining to some. And I'll see you later. Goodbye.